This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Thanks for checking out one of our past live sessions. If you had fun and enjoyed it, we'll hope you tune in for one of our future lives. And remember, if you're one of our paid members, you can watch these and all the rest of them anytime on your platform. Awesome. Okay, so we're just going to be talking a little bit about writing on your projects. So whether that's cakes, cookies, whatever, whether it's in buttercream or you're doing it in royal icing on fondant. Sorry, I had to tape my paper down to keep it from moving. So we talked a little bit about printing on cakes before. So then there's cursive. And then also the thing that gets me a lot lately is people want the more modern style kind of calligraphy writing. So I have, as you can see, I was probably gonna break my decorations because I did them yesterday, lined some paper, right? So I just took a piece of paper of parchment I folded it in half and for practice sake I basically made myself a little practice book so I just took a ruler and a sharpie and I drew some lines just so I know where I'm starting and I don't have to worry about writing straight uh, if you're just starting out if you use a kind of buttercream that gets firm when you're putting it in the refrigerator you can put a little line on the top of your cake so that you can write straight and it's nice and easy and that's a nice thing to do and you can kind of always uh, blur that later, right, with a little spatula or a paintbrush if you don't want that to show. But it makes it easy to get your letters lined up so you're worried about one less thing while you're writing. And I picked a really bright color today just so that it would show up nicely on the paper for you all. So the first thing we're going to talk about is cursive. And so when you're writing in cursive with a pen, the idea is that, I'm just going to put this at a slant so that it's easier for me to write, sorry. I'm going to tape it down too good. Right. The idea is that when you're writing in cursive, you don't have to right, pick up the pen so it's faster. But when we do this in frosting, if you're overlapping things like this stroke where you pull back on the S and then go into the I, you're going to have a big buildup of frosting. So if your frosting isn't stiff enough, it's a little warm, you can kind of start to lose the definition, right? The spaces in the letters like E's, S's, O's, A's, and that can be problematic. So the idea here is you're going to write much like you would in print, even though it's cursive. So it's going to take the same amount of time. It's just going to look prettier. So I will do what I normally do, which is touch down, right? Let my frosting drop into place. Make that little tail so I'm joining things together. And then I'm going to start the next line, right? And so at every part where normally I would draw the pen up and keep going and overlap it, I stop and start a new line, right? So on my S, instead of pulling the bag back across there, I'm gonna come out to the edge of that little S and pull up and then go and do my I. Right? What's number two? Right, I am using a number two tip. You should use whatever is most comfortable for you. And obviously, if you use a larger tip, then you kind of have to do larger letters. And just always make sure you don't forget to dot your I's, cross your T's, etc. So that's kind of the basic of cursive. There are some letters sometimes, especially capital ones, like D's, G's, they can look a little funny. So sometimes I do altered letters and I even have to think for a second, what a capital G in cursive is, right? I think it's um, well, like that, right? It doesn't really look like a G. So a lot of times what I do is kind of a modified print, right? I end up making it fancier so it goes with the cursive writing, but so that it's easily legible because a lot of people actually don't learn cursive anymore and don't know how to read it. 
Um, so there's some things where if you're writing on something and say like the S looks weird or awkward, you can always put in a regular S and then just join it to the next letter, right? So sometimes I end up doing kind of a modified um, cursive alphabet where I'm mixing in some regular letters, some cursive letters based on how legible I want it to be. So if you're doing something and you don't think it's going to read well on your cake, which sometimes it just doesn't, feel free to mix it up. You always want to make sure that your customers, your friends, your family actually knows what it's saying and that they think their names are spelled right because that's not something you want to do to them, right? So that's kind of basics of cursive. The main thing is just one, looking out for letters that can be ambiguous and people might mistake for other things. And two, making sure that you're stopping and starting at each letter. So even though it's a little more time consuming, you'll get nice legible writing on top of your cakes, right? When we go into calligraphy, I've printed out, oh, thanks for the hearts, a nice little sample alphabet just for reference sake, right? And I can already spot, like there's a few letters like this F that they did, the kind of crossbar on it where it loops back up is so low that it almost looks like an L. So if I'm gonna do that letter, most likely I'm gonna pull that back up here and make sure it actually looks like an F so that people don't have a hard time reading your stuff. And this has been really popular lately, like home decor, decor for weddings, showers, etc. And I literally saw something the other week and I just laughed because it was supposed to say sisters, but it looked like fifters. And I can't even pronounce that, but all the S's actually looked like F's because of the way they were written. And so it just wasn't legible. So when you're using this, make sure you stop, take a second and make sure your S's, your F's, things like that, they really look like the letters they're supposed to be, and it doesn't accidentally say something else, because I've seen a couple where it accidentally says something a little uh, inappropriate. Um, and while funny when posted on the internet isn't what you want on your cakes, especially if you're producing them for customers. So just kind of keep that in mind with these kind of calligraphy alphabets. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab myself a new piece of paper, so I have lots of room. And I'm just gonna do probably, let's see, maybe happy holidays just because it's that time of year. Most people are celebrating something. There's a lot going on, right? And it's a nice kind of general statement. All purpose works for everybody, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and write it out for myself underneath so that it's easy to trace, right? on top with my buttercream. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm in a good spot where everyone can kind of see it, right? So I'm just going to make sure that my letters all line up. Sorry, hard to write and talk at the same time. Right, so I kind of have it blocked out for myself. And then this is key, right? So I'm gonna bring out that bag I had before that had the number two tip. And also I've got one with a larger tip on it. So this is like a four. And when I'm doing this on an actual cake, I'll take a toothpick, a barbecue skewer, a take tester, anything, and I'm just gonna block out those letters just like I did where I was writing underneath so that I know where the letters are gonna be and what I'm gonna do is use the fat bag like where I would put more pressure with one of these paintbrush calligraphy pins and my skinnier one for all the detailed areas. So I'm gonna go in and put the big areas in first 
and then I'm going to go back and connect them together. So this is one where you kind of have to have things laid out to make it make sense. Otherwise, you're kind of picking up and putting down bags for each letter all the time, right? And that can get a little bit tedious. So I'm going to go in and start with my H, right? Heavy pressure and taper off, right? Heavy and taper. We will answer those questions at the end of the yes. class. I won't forget that question about writing on the side of the cake. Oh, yes, that is much more difficult. Start with the top. We'll talk about that in the end. Right. So you can see I'm using increased pressure to make those fatter lines. And then what I'm going to do is join them together with the skinnier ones and put on all the flourishes. Sorry, I'm getting into the groove, so I tend to hum to myself when I'm doing work like this, and I find myself doing it right now. Right? So I've gone in with my big and I'm going to just go back right, and make my little lines. So this is a great place if you want to get fancy, do some little curly cues. And it does pay to take your time, right? So it's a little tedious, but it can give you a really, really beautiful beautiful finished product. Thanks for the hearts. I can see those out of the corner of my eye. It's one of those things. It doesn't look like very much until it starts to come together and then it looks fantastic. I went backwards with my own, sorry. So as with anything, I always keep a healthy supply of toothpicks on hand. That way, if I get a little off, oh, and that's, you can always remove it and start over, right? Because mistakes are gonna happen. So my little O needs to go that way. And when I used to teach more in-person classes, I always used to call my index finger my magic eraser, right? Don't worry about messing up, especially when you're practicing. That is the time to mess up. Can you do the same thing if you mess up on a cake? Um, you can very carefully. I usually keep tiny spatulas or like a little toothpick. And if you're working on a cake that has a firm surface, so before I write on them, I always put them in the refrigerator, give it a nice like half hour, et cetera. That way, if you're working with a darker color, you can just take a little toothpick, take the end of a, a tapered spatula and just work off that area. That way, if you have a mistake, you can kind of uh, get rid of that little blemish. If it leaves a little stain, 
uh, just kind of dig out that little area and fill it in with a little of the frosting for the top of the cake, so much better. So if you have, especially like bags, you can air bubble, it pops on you. There's nothing really you can do about that. It's just gonna happen occasionally, but it really, really sucks when it happens while you're writing on something. Um, and the best thing is not to panic. And you can always, like if you have a little blemish, put that cake back in the refrigerator. And then when it's all hard, it's easier to take off that little area that's not perfect. Like right now, if this say we're on the top of the cake, after I'm done, I probably put it in, take it out after a half an hour and just clean up around that oat where I had a little like, I don't know, brain fog and I went the wrong direction with my loop, uh, which can happen sometimes when you're doing this kind of work because obviously you're kind of filling in letters and gaps and pieces and it's not uh, quite the same as when you're just writing everything out. Right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up, right? Beautiful, right? So it looks gorgeous, right? So that's kind of an introduction to calligraphy. My main tip is one, to always make sure you kind of give yourself a guide, draw on the top of your cake, side, whatever, and then go back with the two bags. I find it's easier to go in with the bigger tip uh, and usually if I'm using like a two for my skinny lines, I'll use a four for my fat ones. Sometimes with the buttercream, depending on the type, using a one can be a little tedious, but if I were to use a one, I would use a three for the fat one. And I go in with the big areas first and then I connect them with the small ones. Uh, the other kind of stuff that you can do with writing that's beautiful, sometimes maybe if you don't wanna write a whole saying, let's say it's for a wedding, a shower, whatever, is the kind of big old um, kind of illuminated letter style pieces. So just thought I would wah, do one of those really quickly. And I'll probably just do an A just because it's a nice, easy one to do. So sometimes top of a cake or maybe a cookie, right? Someone's getting married. They don't really have a lot of ideas. They don't know what they want. I always get a lot of customers that are kind of like, mm, I don't know, something, you know, and they don't really give you a lot of ideas about what they want to do or can't give you much past a name and a color. It's a good one to do. And this is one of those ones where you can then use things like your basket weave tips and incorporate those into writing. We'll answer more questions in the end. Yes. And this will be really quick and then I can go back and answer a lot of questions. I just wanted to show you just one more alternate thing because sometimes writing a lot on a cake is a little too daunting, but most people can get one big letter, right? Nice and easy. So you can use the different tips in your arsenal. This one's just a number 44, so it's a basket weave tip. Let me show it to you all, right? And it just has a flat opening on both sides. And I like it when I'm doing kind of block lettering, right? So I'm just gonna use it, right, to draw a nice line all the way up, so nice and fat. I'm gonna change back to my smaller tip. Right, and use that for any kind of fine areas. Right, so this is kind of more like the old school, I don't know, I would say like a Times New Roman kind of alphabet if we're talking about computer fonts. And change to my big one to outline this area. And this nice fat open area is a place for us to do some detail, right? So you can put in a pattern. If you're working on something, say for a wedding, you can put in something that's important to the couple or another like kind of detail. And it could be as simple as just dots or little lines, right? Or sometimes I like to do just a little kind of nice, make it up as you go kind of filigree pattern, right? So it doesn't have to be anything too complicated, but it's a good 
way to add some detail. pieces, right? There doesn't have to be anything crazy in there. Just a good, you know, a way to make something different on the top if you're going to do a monogram. Rather than just doing one solid letter with just lines, you can add that fat space into a lot of capital letters and put in some different details, whether it's a geometric pattern or something floral, that's up to you. But it's just a, a way to kind of use your writing skills to your advantage. If say you don't want to write um, a whole last name on a bunch of cookies, because that's going to take a lot of time, but doing one block letter that's a little bit fancier might be a nice time saver, great detail for people and less less taxing on your hands. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.